and girls and boys, welcome to yet another episode of the Ugandan podcast. My name is Brandy Valentine Azerwe, Communication Officer, Ministry of ICT and National Guidance. It is January and guess what? We are having a summit January in Uganda. And to discuss uh, more about the summit, we have uh, Ms. Gerard Sully, the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Trade, Industries and Cooperatives. And she'll be talking about the business forum, and uh, which is one of the side events that we're having. But let me not preempt her presentation. You're welcome to the Ugandan podcast once again. Thank you again. very much. Thank you very much, Brandy. Thank you for having me. Mm. Uh, those are my introductions, and I'm really glad to be here. Yeah. Last time we had you and we were just here, you see now we have improved and... I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> what you're doing for government of Uganda and its people. Well, we, try as well the done. we try as the Ministry of ICT. I know, I can't see you. <laughs> we, we really appreciate your work. I'm glad. Yes. Now, let's get into our conversation for today. Why the business forum? Well, we thought that we would take uh, this opportunity. It's not many times that um, you get a country hosting about, I mean, over 100 countries mm. at any one time. Mm. And uh, we thought, you know, this is our turn. The Nanalai movement is a very big movement. Mm. And uh, why not do business now? Mm. Because we are a progressive state and we would like to be part of the global progress, especially uh, on industry, you know, the economies of uh, scale, scaled markets. Yeah. So how would you scale your market if you can't take uh, the opportunity of decision makers? Because mm. every single president that has come is the CEO of their country. True. Those are the decision makers. Yeah. So if you really want to do business with some of these countries, why not have the side event, the business summit, as well as the, uh, the trade exhibition? Uh, t for them to see and we, you know, showcase what Uganda has to offer. Mm -hmm. I think we have a lot of potential. We are doing a lot already, but we have a lot of locked potential yes. within so many sectors of Uganda. And this is an opportunity we cannot let go. Okay, yes. that's good. It's amazing how you said we have a lot of locked opportunity that we yes. can open. Yes. Probably when we open those opportunities, then we may stop being a landlocked country. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> right now we are like uh, land linked. Yes. And uh, we have to also take advantage of that fact. Yes. So not many countries can just cross uh, to from one end of the border post to uh, and the continent to the other. So yes. if we provide that facility and also uh, for us to participate in um, exchange of goods and services to increase our GDP, that would be the best. The, p the opportunities are enormous. Enormous and, and yeah. endless. So where is the business forum going to be? And what date is it going to be happening? Yeah, the business forum is going to happen in uh, Serena, Kampala. Okay. And it's going to happen from tomorrow, the 15th, mm. up to the 17th of January, 2024. All right. So we're starting uh, January in Hygiea. Exactly. Imagine what we're going to be doing in December. For the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. will have left us with a lot of homework and things to follow up. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So who is participating in the business forum? Uh, we have quite a number of people in the private sector. Mm. The first is uh, the apex body of the private sector, mm. PSFU, the ah, Private the Sector Foundation, Foundation Uganda. Uganda. Okay. We have people, people from the CEO Forum. We have people from the Grain Council. Oh. We have uh, people from U U uh, Uganda Manufacturers Association. We have uh, the UL women, women from uh, in business and business entrepreneurs. Mm. We have so many business leaders, people from manufacturing. Yes. You know, the whole fraternity is going to be there. Of course, government is also going to be there, mm. especially those who are on the service provision, uh, like, you know, taxpayers, uh, receipting and the service delivery, mm. people in standards, yes. people who are doing export promotion, people, you know, we have the whole range of government officials who are going to support uh, the private sector also participating. Okay. Yes. So basically, it's the public sector, private sector. Yes. Do we have academia as well? <coughs> Definitely, because the academia are the people who are actually writing some of these policy papers supporting government arms mm. in terms of uh, reviewing policies, reviewing uh, and, and making them sure that our syllabi are all relevant to what we, where we are going, mm. making sure that uh, everything <coughs> that is uh, already implemented is giving us uh, Ugandans the right thing. They're, they're really a very powerful arm yeah. of uh, monitoring and evaluation of government policies. So they, we, we they really have, they're very big stakeholder. And what happens, uh, are we also having development partners? By all means, uh, these development partners, uh, for example, we have the USAID, they are in there. 
They give a lot of donor funds which go towards budget support and service delivery. UNDP, that is like the biggest um, player actually in, in uh, donor funding and budget funding, especially where it comes to business support. So I really thank them for uh, all, all our development partners. We thank them for their participation in growing and improving investments for Uganda. Okay. Yeah. And civil society? Civil society is also very serious because without civil society, it's very hard to actually run a country. These are people who are like, they're checkers. They're just like uh, the, the academia. They are checkers of uh, government policy. They are checkers on uh, service delivery. So, it, it, you know, they sort of provide a third eye on how things are happening, apart mm. from, you know, having the, le the, the three arms of government, yes. the legislative, the executive. And so these, these people are playing a very key role in society. <coughs> okay. Yes. Mm. So who, um, what do we stand to benefit from the Business Forum as a nation? You know what? The opportunities <laughs> are endless. First of all, um, how many times does a country in Africa host NAM? Not so. Not so many. Yeah. And the uh, NAM, Nanolite Movement, these are over 130 countries. Yeah. So w w when we have such an opportunity, mm. we have to milk it. We have got to catch uh, every single opportunity because the heads of state who are supposed to be the CEOs of each country are here. They are the decision makers. And they have <coughs> developed in so many fields and sectors. Yes. So we can actually do sharing yes. of skills and and um, everything to do with benchmarking and everything to do with the marketing Uganda and vice versa, them marketing themselves, what they have to offer. The collaborations are endless. Yes. Yes. Uh, so th that, that explains, so I'm um, understanding that there are different people who are going to be exhibiting, who are nationals and uh, others who are international. People who are not from the country are called international people, no? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So on that, uh, on that, on that same uh, point, what sectors have taken priority or center stage in uh, the business forum? Yes, uh, <coughs> we have about five sec key sectors that have taken center stage. Yes. And I like that. The most important one for us as a country mm. is the one on agriculture side. Our backbone. Exactly, yeah. because we are um, oriented towards agriculture yes. and we have our parish development model which we need to market. Yes. You know, we have this thing going which is called parish to market. Mm. We would like to uh, bring whatever is produced in this parish development model to go out to market local markets, uh, East African markets, as well as international markets. Okay. So there are about eight businesses that have, are participating in within the agriculture, agribusiness. Agri okay. And uh, there are about three businesses which are just doing agricultural machinery okay. alone. Okay. So that, those, that <coughs> sector has been represented by about 11 companies, and that is very good yeah. for us. So even if we get, we get five right, we don't have to do so much, but as long as we can crack a few and get them right it yeah. will it will be a tipping point for us yeah. uh real estate and construction there are about eight companies okay. and uh manufacturing yeah. also represented by about 17 companies 17 for manufacturing, 17 from manufacturing okay. and all that is value addition yeah yes uh, when the president was doing his end of year address yes. he talked about how factories had come up and uh, they were employing a whole big number of, of the population. Factories and value addition and industry has played a very big part. Actually, if you look at the pre-pandemic figures, yes. it was about, we about 4.5 billion uh, US dollars uh, worth <coughs> of GDP. But I'm hoping that uh, within the next five years, yes. we could actually hit our mark of about 10 billion US dollars mm. GDP. If we get all these things right yes. and the progress and the growth is, is uh, steady, and then we also use the opportunity of the FCFTAs. And some of these countries that have come under NAM are actually part of uh, the AFCFTA signed up. There are about 54 countries signed the up. free trade some area. Are, yes, yes, the continental free trade area. And some yeah. of them have come uh, as part of NAM. Yeah. So we are hoping to sign a few MOUs on the sidelines mm. for Ugandans to make it easy for the movement of goods and services and people, yes. wherever they are doing trade, wherever they're doing business, <coughs> wherever they're trying to invest. Yes. And then they're also, um, so there are three companies in ICT. Do we need to have more companies in ICT because this soft infrastructure brings a lot of savings and, and uh, cost efficiencies, yes. where even where there's production, industry, and all those places. Absolutely, and mm. also because uh, the Ministry of ICT launched the Digital Transformation Roadmap, 
So it has given us different uh, the five pillars which you can find on uh, the on the website. So yes. to see that there are ICT companies yeah. is a good thing. Yes. Okay. What was the other what other sector is available? No, well, those are mainly the other sectors. Oh, but set, the ones taking center stage. Yes, oh, okay. but wh what I wanted to say yeah. is that there has <coughs> been about 570 delegates who have shown interest in the business summit. This is the biggest score of number we have ever had uh, as an interest in business in Uganda. That's fantastic. Yes, and 400 of them are international. Okay. So the rest are U Ugandans. Yes. And uh, in the exhibition, mini exhibition in Munyonyo, mm. we have about 40 players there who are going to be exhibiting art and crafts and the tourism sector. Yes. So we would like to encourage all our guests, whether you're local delegates or whether you're international delegates, to pass by Munyonyo and buy and take yourself part of Uganda and keep us and remember us and um, remember that you ca you're always welcome to our home to do business with us, yes. to visit us. And uh, we are the Pearl of Africa, and we remain the Pearl of Africa. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Undisputed. We will for good yes, and we our are country. very beautiful country, Uganda. And uh, <laughs> this this is uh, something that we are really proud of. Yeah. And uh, Uganda has been unexplored to the full. If uh, we were to explore our tourism potential. Yes. We would we would be flying out of here. We are, <laughs> and thank God we are still here. And my question, actually, uh, my next my follow up question is, if um, the delegates we have all these five hundred delegates who are going to be joining us for the business forum, in their free time when they are not at Serena, uh, what would you recommend they do? You know what? Yes. The sights and sounds of Kampala. Yes. We have got so many um, nice, cozy places mm. in Kampala. You just go there and uh, feel the hospitality mm. of Ugandans, the warm smiles, the food. Yes. And I'm telling you, mm. uh, you know, I've traveled so many countries, but our food has taste. Our fruits are the most delicious. Yes. The pineapples, mm. melon, everything. You know, if you go down Nakasero Market, mm. and then the biggest tourist attraction, I think, is the Kampala Park. The Kampala Park. It's organized <coughs> in a way that you could never imagine. Uh. What you will see from the area of view is a thousand and a billion cars. Yeah. But every single one can knows where it's going and who's yeah. running it. It runs like a, like a magical maze. <laughs> yes. I see you have a thing for the views, yeah? You yes, like to see it. Yes, but also if they have time yeah. to step out, they must visit um, the western part of Uganda. There's Lake Winyonyi. It mm. is beautiful. Yes. They can go to uh, Queen Elizabeth National Park. Yes. They can go. You know, Uganda is just amazing. If they have the time... This is where you'll find the most beautiful beasts roaming the country. Mm. And they are wild and free and still beautiful. All the waterfalls, city falls, Matson falls. We should put it's you on this. We should tell you, Uganda Tourism Board, to put you as an ambassador because <laughs> you have explained <laughs> all of them. Last time we were in Gulu and went to Aru Falls and they were really spectacular. Every single time I'm amazed by Uganda. And it's not just because I'm a Ugandan, but yes. every single time I go out to the countryside yes. and I watch the beautiful countryside, I am humbled mm. and amazed. But the one place which I felt like, you know, if there is a place on earth where God lives, yes. it has to be Lake Bunyonyi. Lake Bunyonyi. My mother comes from Lake Bunyonyi. I see, on yes. the island there, on the banks. So. And you know what? Those locals just take it for granted. They don't know how beautiful yeah. the place they live is. They, they just get fish and have dinner. And they, yeah, and then they and go to bed. They don't the, know. Yeah. Then the children want to swim in the morning. I know. It's such a joy. I know. Um, the next question. Are you ready for the next question? Yes, please. What is the progress of digitization in the Ministry of Trade, Industries and Property? Oh, my God. We have done a lot of uh, digitization. Actually, it is like the biggest agenda we have. Mm. Why? Because we are a service ministry. Yes. So service delivery is very important to us. Efficiency in service delivery, cost savings, turnaround time. Mm. For example, um, in December 2021, we began to launch the EGP, which is the e-procurement of government. Yes. That was meant to save money. Actually, when we did the post-implementation review, we discovered that we have saved <coughs> about, um, just in procurement alone, yes. about 40%. Wow, that's nice. That's yes. almost half. Yes. Now, at least that money, we can now channel it towards uh, our officers going out there and doing monitoring and evaluation of our government programs. And then we also implemented the paperless proje project. Mm. We did the EGRMS last year. 
So we now don't shift paper around. As you can see, I've progressed. The last time I was here, I had paper. You had a, fi a you file had of paper. documents. Now I just have my little thing here. Yeah. And I can just see my papers yeah. and uh, all the papers come in and all the workflows are all. And the letters, the letters yes. in government don't end. All, yes, yes, they never end. Yes. But of course we scan them and yeah. then we, we put them through the workflows of soft papers. Which and is records. fantastic. And then we also we are also going to launch our management information system of the cooperatives. Why? Because we, we are digitizing the cooperatives database yes. and we hope that our customers are going to just do sales service online. They mm -hmm. have login portals. You don't have to walk into our um, home to, to get whatever you want to get. And, you know, then, of course, all these permits and everything, we have got uh, the one-stop center, yes. which uh, we use for them to log in and apply for their permits. So we are trying to cut get those low-hanging fruit uh, in terms of service delivery to our customers and we're hoping that it will reduce their turnaround time okay what is this turnaround time you talk about you know like for example when uh, a request comes in for something sometimes it would take like three four months to oh, respond yeah. but when it is instantly e it yeah. falls on your portal and when you don't act on it it flags and get, gets a red flag to your boss. It moves from green to three red. Three days. Yes. yes, so it moves from green to red, which means that you know, you'll know you be in trouble yes. if you don't do your work. Yes. So for us, we think that this is the best uh, we can do to enforce. But of course, we need to do a lot of training for our staff and uh, get the gadgets that we have to use yes. to see that uh, these systems are actually working. Okay. Yes. That's fantastic. I, I, I love that you've made progress. <laughs> I think, because uh, last time we talked about and you had said that you wanted to do all these things and now to see that you're doing them, yes. it's, it's really great. Thank you. Oh, it, and also, yes. the one thing we did in December, we have got, the, we have finally got a, a barcode for Uganda. Uganda you, didn't have a barcode. Yes. All our products in manufacturing, we are using barcodes from other countries, Tanzania, Kenya, Rwanda. Yes. They, we ne we've never had a barcode as Uganda. Yes. But we finally managed to achieve it in December last year, and we're going to launch it uh, after NAM. Okay. So which means that our Ugandan products will have uh, the certificates of origin ingrained within the barcode. Yes. To show that, you know, this is a product of Uganda. Aha, uh -huh. those barcodes, are they the ones you were saying where it, when you, you scan, scan a product, it shows you how, ma how, you ga how much of Ugandan it yes. is? Yes. So when last time I promised you that we're yes, going to do it, we've done it. You say it's 70% Uganda. If the product is 70% yes. Uganda, 30% Kenya, yes, it shows. It shows. Yeah, so you, that's what the barcode is also going to be doing for us. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> you are doing the most. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. Is there anything particular you want the Globe to know about the business forum? Okay, so this business forum is a very special platform where we are going to showcase what we do here in Uganda. Mm. The investment opportunities are way up there. Yeah. We have oil and gas, we have agriculture, we have tourism, we have um, specific investments to do with <coughs> cotton. Yes. We have, you can invest in our coffee value chains. We have so many value chains to invest in. Why? Because just like any other African country, we have been perceived to be the provider of raw materials yes. more fundamentally than value addition. Value we addition. don't want to do that because when we sell only raw materials, we are shortchanged. Yes. And uh, people take a very big portion of the profitability within that value chain down the downstream. And so our farmers and our producers, you know, get a small value. Whereas if you every stage that you do a value addition on a product, you claim part of the profits. So we are encouraging business partners to come in and invest in our value chains. Mm. All the big C's, cotton, cocoa. <coughs> We are now even doing macadamia nuts. Ugandans are now do I into so many things. But what we really need is uh, partners, especially those who have been doing this for a very long time, like, like West Africa has been doing cocoa yes, for a very have. long time. They are highly specialized. They are supporting big companies like Cadbury's. And Cadbury's is up in arms in a crisis because <laughs> they are no longer giving them uh, raw materials. They are saying, well, you come and buy our... Uh, chocolate from it, here. Uh, absolutely. Yes, because, yes. you know, you've been <coughs> trading in our chocolate. Now, our coffee is one of the best aroma coffee in the world. It, which we need to let people know. Yeah, that's why we have really time put this store. Again. Because they are using, like, for example, in Germany, yes. they are using our co coffee in 12 varieties in Germany to provide them with aroma yes. in their coffee. So why don't you come and get the coffee straight 
from, from the Uganda, source. from the source, yes. and then give us some good money. Yes. Why don't you allow us to roast? Yes. If we roast, then they will cap some tax on the roasted one just yes. to discourage us from roasting. Yes. But we want to these people to have the big conversation. Why doesn't Uganda do its own roasting? Why mm. don't we do our roasteries? Yes. It's very expensive, but it's worth it. It's worth it. Because mm. even uh, when we're doing the press briefing for the Nana Lion Movement Summit, the 19th, uh, PS of uh, the Permanent Secretary of Foreign Affairs, uh, Mr. Vincent Bajiri, he said uh, one of the things they're going to discuss in the summit is value addition, as you have just yes. expounded. Yes. Said instead of us sending raw coffee and then buying the Nescafe, yeah, yeah, yeah. then after that we buy Nescafe at uh, three times. Can I tell you something <coughs> interesting? Yes. Like Morocco. Morocco, we had an agreement with Morocco. 2019, the agreement expired yes. for us to give them coffee, coffee. roasted coffee. Yes. But when the agreement expired, it was never renewed, and I do not know why, but we are working on renewing it. Yes. But uh, Italians would come in, buy our coffee green bean, take it to Italy, roast it, and then sell it to the Moroccans, mm. our fellow Africans. Our fe so I'm thinking, why is this middleman <laughs> loading in? Cost? <laughs> of course, we have got uh, challenges of, uh, you know, their... Like any other business, you you find their cartels, you find all sorts of things. Yes. But still, where we have got the AFCFT and Morocco's are also signed up, just like Uganda. Yes. We say, well, come on, let's have some uh, discussion on the table. The coffee that you're buying from Italy is here. It's here, right Not, here. Uh, yeah. And uh, would you just uh, come in, taste it? And these are the suppliers we <coughs> have on our lists, and you know whatever you want, Arabica, whether you know screen fifteen to eighteen, whatever you want, we have it. Yes. So for me, I believe in having these solid conversations. And even if we were to do just one deal and get it right. And b because Morocco is importing <coughs> about 30% of the Ugandan coffee from Italy. Yes. Also, are there particular deals that you're going to sign that you can let us in on? Well, no, I don't want to uh, preempt. Because pre 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 <laughs> <laughs> suppose we go on the sidelines yeah. and some of our partners say, well, no, we don't want this, we don't want that. And then and you're then like, we are done. No, no, we cannot say we are done. <laughs> There's always a way to make things happen. Okay, okay. So I think we shall just come back and recap yes. after the whole summit to do an appraisal. How did it go? And then we tell you, oh, by the way, we signed this, 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 and that. Because okay. there are quite a number of... Uh, uh, collaborations that uh, governments want to sign on yes. the sidelines yes. and uh, I'm hoping that they will go well fingers crossed fingers crossed yes so we shall be having uh, P.S. Jaradin for the third episode sometime in the future yeah, we will come back to do a review <laughs> a review yes, yes. Um, I heard you talk about uh, that you've been all over the world and you've tried different uh, cuisines but the Ugandan cuisine remains unbeatable what would you want someone coming for the business forum or the G77 summit, G77 plus China summit, the third South summit, or NAM to try? You know what? Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, Matoke and Yinyewa. That's that it. one will tickle each and every single bird in your, <laughs> <laughs> in your mouth. Yes. To water. And then you go for this thing called Eshawe. Eshawe. Yes. It is nice. Yeah, I know. Agree. People think it's like yogurt. Mm. So some people eat it, think it's yogurt, and then they put it on salad. Yes. But really, if you eat it the right way that you're supposed to eat it, with color. Nice. With color. Yes, yeah. with the color. It's really nice. Yes. And people are like, oh, well, now carbohydrates and that kind of stuff. Well, mm. we are very much alive, and, and you know, it has no afrotoxins, mm. it has no, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm. It's good natural food. Mm. Hmm? Everything that we have is organic, which means that it is left with its original taste. And nutrients. And, we, and nutrients. Yes. And we don't take it for granted. Absolutely. So um, because of that, I, I think, you know, you know, just embrace the food, be open-minded, try out as many dishes as it's possible. possible. The luwombo of chicken is uh, to die for. Mm. You know, just go for it. Yes, and the yes. oxtail these days is being so... The sore. oxtail <laughs> is amazing. You know, our beef tastes so nice. We have so many nice countries that soup. wanted our beef. Yeah. But for some reason, we have not yet got uh, as many abattoirs to satisfy demand. Mm. Sometimes if we were to actually place a constant demand of beef, say for example, 1,000 um, cows exported every month, we would be depleted within a year, yeah. the cows here in Uganda. That's true. Yeah, because these people like, and, and of course if it, is the, it meets the standard, if our abattoirs meet the standards, uh, we, so we therefore need to scale up, which we now we are now calling export preparedness. Export if preparedness. you're going to be commercializing your exports, we have got to put a window period of 
preparing, like two to three years. Yes. Preparing, making sure that all the infrastructure to commercialize is there. Mm. And for me, that's why I encourage people to do the cooperatives because if you cannot scale up on your own, as a group of people in a cooperative, you can scale up and then we process whatever you're producing on a scale. Okay. Yes. So that's also another place that you can invest. Exactly. And also this motoke and groundnut seems to be something that everyone enjoys. Even Ambassador Adonia ever they say, <laughs> motoke and groundnuts. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, we are coming to the end. Mm -hmm. We are getting closer, closer. One more question. Two more, but technically one. How can young people be part of this, uh, be involved in the summit as a, in the summits as a whole? How can the young people be involved in the summits as a whole? You know what? Young people are going to be involved in the growth and development of this country beyond this summit. Correct. I hope they look at it that way. Mm. because, And I hope they wake up to realize that they are the next leaders yes. and they're going to be working in a highly uh, computerized environment. And yes. it's not going backwards. Yes. It's only going to move forward. Because technology is coming every day. And they're going to be part of that fast-moving environment. Because yes. while you know we are wearing off and uh, going into retirement, tomorrow's people must actually embrace technology, embrace uh, manufacturing with you know high level. Because that's it. That's where the world is going. There's, sure. there's no other way. Yes. If you look at the highly developed countries like China, uh, the, the, the biggest critical success factor has been technology. technology. There's no way around it. Yeah. Malaysia, technology. So with that significance in the other countries, we have to import that ideology here as well. Yes. We cannot turn a blind eye and say, oh, well, for us, that's technology. We don't know about it. No. We don't. We, we, we will catch up later. It yeah. will actually leave you. You yeah. see, if you don't catch up now, it leaves you. You see, like how the payphone was left on the street? Yes. Nobody gets into a payphone to make a phone call and put in a coin and make a phone call. Yes. So they, they, that, that was their Kodak moment. Mm. They left these payphones on the streets thinking that people <coughs> will continue putting in a coin mm. and then you make a phone call. But now everything is on this phone. Yes, it's doing true. performing like 1,000 functions. I don't need to go to that payphone. So you leave your payphone there. I, I have left you behind. You, <laughs> you know, nobody is using it. It's now a monument on the street. True. I don't even think they are there anymore. Uh, they're, they're actually there. No, they're not actually. They're very few. Very few. I, I, but, but you can see, inevitably, technology leaves you. It leaves you, If yeah. you If you don't uh, sort of get in. I mean, you say that the phone does like a thousand things. I think when I go to bed and then I wake up, my phone is like, oh, we are back at it again. That is why <laughs> people get so devastated when some lunatic steals your phone. Yes. It's like they've taken the whole world of the, you. Uh, half of it. Half of your yeah. world, you know, you're devastated. And really, people get depressed out of losing phones mm -hmm. because, you know, you lose your memories on there. You lose uh, all the communications, all your business contacts, all, you know. Mm, yeah, you have to start and, and you're devastated and you have to start to, from scratch. It's mm. like a tsunami going through your life. But yeah. that is technology. Uh, yeah. So. And when you said that uh, living uh, technology, if you don't catch up, it will leave you. Yeah. We might, the Third South Summit, the theme this year is leaving no one behind. Exactly. So let, let the young people carry on and okay. Exactly. I mean, how many times you still write a letter or send a fax? Mm -hmm. Letters, <laughs> we, we need them for official communication <laughs> and documentation in government. It's hard it? to even use email right now. Uh, People, are, yes. Everybody has gone on to social media now. That's where they are using their communication. It happens faster, yes, mm -hmm. and, and Telegram and mm -hmm. WhatsApp and wherever. And exactly. Yeah, that's okay. true. Now, as we end this episode... Do you have words of hope, of love, of encouragement to anyone listening to you or watching the Ugandan podcast? Do you know what? Yes. I have always thought about this thing. It has looked for me. Mm. When we say for God and my country, yes. let us underline just that little phrase mm. and say, do we really understand or act within yes. God and our country all the time mm. when we are doing our work, when we're doing service delivery as government, I really want people to think about it mm. and mean it yes. every single time they're executing on behalf of government. Yes. Because some people have got uh, a way of interpreting it yes. and want to impose it on everybody else. Yes. I will tell you, it will not catch. Mm. With the modern Uganda, it will not catch. Yes. That traditional way of thinking that... Uh, for God and my stomach, yes. 
it will not cut. Where mm. Uganda is going, that Uganda is going to be phased up in mm. future. Yeah. Actually, it is technology that is going to phase it out. Yeah. Because fake technology is going to leave a soft footprint which will force you mm. to go think for your country. Yeah. And um, it's going to force you to actually act for your country. Mm. And if you don't act for your country like you swear on God and your country, then it's going to be uh, a waste of time. So for me, I think that is the main thing that I would like Ugandans to think about mm. and all our guests to know that that is what uh, our totem mm. is. Yeah, and, um, for, yeah. I, I, and we think about it. So I'm very hopeful that where Uganda is going somehow, Things will even themselves out and we shall get there mm. for God and our country. All right. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. <laughs> we wish you all the best in the business for her. I know you. you're going to have a, a, a stall uh, a exhibition in yes. Munyonyo. Correct. Uh, you'll probably find me there. Yes. And uh, all the best. I Doing all the branding for me. Oh, the branding has thank been you. hard work, but it has. It, we, we, are, we have made progress. I like what it looks like. We partnered with Ministry of Foreign Affairs and MTN and Uganda Tourism Board, and I like what we see. And with every experience of such an international organizing, we get better. Yeah, and you yeah, learn. We get better, and yeah. we learn, and you know, and we give. We keep going. Our passion <laughs> and give wholeheartedly. Exactly. To the to the nation. Yes. So what? Or if someone wants to reach out to you on uh, the digital platforms, where can we find you on X? What's uh, what are your handles? Uh, those ones, I'm going to give them to you uh, with my PR person. I follow you, so I can yes. tell me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and Sarah Dinsoli on X, and then you can also find her on LinkedIn. And she's also Googleable. She's uh, really smart, really cool. <laughs> and she's the permanent secretary of Ministry of Trade. Yes. So uh, we will take this opportunity to say bye. Thank you. Oh God. Thank you, as viewers, and uh, thank you so and much okay. for uh, logging in yes. and listening to us. Yes. We really hope that um, everything in NAM and G77 goes uh, to the best of our abilities and our preparations. Yes. Thank you. Under the leadership of uh, uh, the head of public service, uh, Madam Lucy Nachore, we have done all we can to prepare for this summit and the business forum, whatever doesn't go well. Uh, we did our best and we're sorry, but whatever goes well. By the way, let me tell you, I want to thank the whole team. The whole team. I am telling you, sometimes I was looking at people and wondering whether they even sleep. <laughs> now, as for the head of public service, yes. Ms. Lucy Nachor, yes. I look at her and wonder if she even gets a chance yes. to go and wash her face yes. and have a meal. She has given this entire She has given it everything. everything. Yeah. And we applaud her and the whole team. Mm. It's not yet done mm. until the fat lady sings. So let us uh, go in there, mm. still working and still supporting the whole thing. Let's see how it goes and mm. plays out. Dr. Amin Azawede, our permanent secretary, did you catch some sleep? I'm like, yes, I did. <laughs> Good evening. <day, laughs> so uh, we need to go now. Thank you for joining us. My name is Brandy Valentine Azawede, Communication Officer, Ministry of ICT. Feel, sh feel free. Ministry of ICT and National Guidance. Feel free to catch us on all our platforms, on YouTube, X, uh, Instagram, and everywhere. Uh, for now, we say bye for God and my country. Thank you. Bye now.